actually just wiped a little mealy bug off there, which is gross, but... <laughs> My name is Kenna and I'm so excited to have you here with me today. Today I am filming a Hoya collection video. I posted a couple weeks ago on my Instagram and asked if this was something you guys would be interested in seeing and a lot of people did vote yes so I figured today is the day I'm gonna go ahead and get this video filmed. So if you like this kind of video give me a thumbs up and let's get into it. Okay, so if you've watched my houseplant tour, which I will link up here for you guys, you will know that I keep most of my Hoya on a shelf uh, with some grow lights. And since most of them are pretty small, that's where they like to stay. And not a whole lot has changed, but there are a few Hoya that I have now that are no longer on that shelf. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with those, just that way I can put them back where they belong. Uh, the first one is this. This is my Hoya, uh, Australis. I always want to call it an Australis Lisa. It's just an Australis. And she does have mealybugs right now, so I'm keeping her away from all of her friends. I actually just wiped a little mealybug off there, which is gross. But anyways, um, but this is my Hoya Australis. She has a super long tendril here. Uh, she's actually been wrapping my um, oh, Stephanie Erecta that's over on my plant shelf. Um, and She's really happy there. Uh, she seems to be doing really well. She is searching for something to climb, but she's kind of a weird shape, so I don't really know how trellising her would go because I don't want to, you know, cut off the growth to this tendril. So I'm just kind of letting her go and see what happens. She does have a bunch of new leaves coming in. And like I said, mostly she seems pretty happy. And yeah, she's not sun stressing or anything, but I really do like the big shiny leaves that she gives me and think she's quite pretty. Uh, she gets watered probably about every 10 days or so. She is just in a little plastic nursery pot. And she gets, I'd say, pretty bright light, honestly. Uh, most of that shelf gets pretty bright light. And like I said, she's very happy. Hoyas do like that bright light. And I kind of chose her for that spot just to see how she would do. And she's doing great. So again, this is my Hoya Australis. All right, we have a visitor. She decided that she was gonna get up in my lap after sunbathing outside. So she is very toasty. Good for me. Um, but moving on, this is my uh, Hoya Crimson Princess. So I will show my Crimson Queen actually in a minute here, but the Crimson Princess has that inner variegation that is super pretty. I did have a couple of cuttings of a Crimson Princess that I did pot back in here. I actually don't even know which cuttings are which anymore, so, you know, it's definitely taken off. But I'm really loving these newest leaves right here. If we could focus, there we go, these newest leaves right here. They have a lot of that cream in them, and I just think they're so pretty. She lives up here in my east-facing window and gets a fair amount of sun during the day, especially in the mornings. Um, honestly, I kind of water her when I remember to. She probably could use a water right now. But she's kind of on the every 10-ish day schedule, every two-ish week schedule. And again, she's just in a little plastic pot here, like this. And she's pretty happy, so I just kind of leave her be. I'm waiting for the day that she gets really long vines. And I will probably repot her at that point, but until then, she is in this little pot. And I think she's super cute. So the next plant, like I said, is my Hoya Crimson Queen. And she is such a pretty plant. I really, really love that outer variegation. And actually up here where she's been closer to some lights, you can actually see a little bit of that pink kind of peeking through. Uh, this is a plant that sun stresses, so does the Crimson Princess. And that's why they're sometimes referred to as tricolor Hoya, because they can get that pink, that green, and that cream all in the one plant. I do really like this one. Like I said, I think it's really pretty. Um, I really love the leaves. I think just in general, um, they have like that really nice, big kind of thick leaf and they look really beautiful when they're trailing. I don't have one that's like traily right now. This one is also doing the tendril thing. I don't know why <laughs> they've decided to all tendril at once, but they have. Um, 
but yeah I'm hoping one day this will become like a nice long trailing basket that's kind of what I envisioned for this plant and I think it'll be really really nice um, there is a couple of different cuttings in here this plant did start off as cuttings and she's pretty happy I think only the one cutting is currently without any new growth but that's fine the second cutting I potted it actually a little bit later so I'm not all that fussed but this whole tendril is the new growth so honestly I feel like she's pretty happy she also lives underneath the same grow light as the Hoya Australis she does get that really bright uh I wouldn't don't want to say direct because it's not the sun usually the sun is going to be the brightest direct light but it's pretty it's pretty bright light on her um because I did want to keep some of that sun stressing going and she has a little bit of splash in the leaves too which I think is really pretty this is another one that I do have in a plastic pot inside of the terracotta uh, I just don't like the way that the plastic looks a lot of the time, so I just tuck them inside these terracotta pots and they do just fine. She also gets watered every 10-ish days, kind of just depends on when I'm watering the rest of my Hoya. I do try to grab them all at once. And like I said, she seems like she's doing pretty well. Uh, and like I said, also <laughs> has this whole new growth, so I'm really not worried about her and I really love those leaves. Next up is my Hoya Callistophylla, and this one I've had for a little while. She lives in an east-facing window directly on the sill and has given me a bunch of new leaves. Um, she hasn't vined, which is kind of interesting. I know most Hoya vine and then they fill in the vine uh, with leaves afterwards. She's just put out growth and then stopped. And I'm kind of wondering if it's possibly because she doesn't get enough water. Um, this one did come in this mix that's mostly like cocoa guar chips and honestly with my watering habits I can be an underwaterer so because she's especially like in an out of the way spot she probably doesn't get enough water um, so I will probably take the blame for that one but she has put out this leaf which I think looks so cool I do really like it trying to get it in focus there for you guys. Now this leaf, which I do think is really cool. It just has like that one little spot of splash and it's really pretty. Um, and these other leaves that she's put out still look like they're in pretty good shape. They're not like the thickest leaves ever, but they are pretty stiff. Um, so she's not, you know, feeling like she's suffering, but I just feel personally like she could probably use a little bit more water and I'm going to try to make it a mission to give her more water now that I have moved her to my Hoya shelf. Um, I kind of just spontaneously decided to do that the other day. I moved a couple of Hoya off that shelf and there's now a little bit more space. So I wanted to kind of let her spread out a little bit, just kind of get that space uh, that she might need and also keep her in my line of sight. That way I actually remember to water her more often and see maybe if that will get some more growth on this little Calistophylla. All right, and my last Hoya that I do not keep on my Hoya shelf is this Hoya Croniana Splash. And I showed this recently in a video. I really, really love this plant. I think it is just the coolest looking plant ever, especially with like the super, super splashy vines like this one. It looks just really interesting. I love the shape. And I think in general, like this plant, I haven't heard a whole lot about it. I feel like it's underrated. Um, it's making obviously a really gorgeous trailing basket for me right now. I do have it hanging up in the south window and I do try to water it every two weeks-ish. Probably could use a little bit more often. Uh, I think that's just gonna be a trend, but she seems pretty happy. I actually just watered her today, so she's dripping on me just a smidgen. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy this one. I, you know, I think I'm a little more attached to the Hoya that I've grown from cuttings. Uh, so I don't know this one as well. Like I, we feel kind of like we're still acquaintances, if that makes sense. But I really like looking at her and she is putting out some new growth for me. I don't know if you guys can see like those really, really tiny baby leaves kind of at the top. Um, but obviously if we are acquaintances, we get along at least so far. And I'm hoping it stays that way, uh, especially cause like I said, those beautiful like silvery leaves, especially on this vine are just gorgeous. So this is my Hoya Croniana Silver Splash. And I feel like she almost has that super silver in her. I just really like this plant. 
and I actually would recommend picking one up if you guys are looking to get into Hoya because I think it's pretty easy honestly as far as like my other plants might go and I think she could be like a good beginner Hoya especially one this size okay so when i got up to put those other hoyas back i actually realized why i felt like i was forgetting some of the hoyas that aren't on my hoya shelf uh, and it's because i do have a few hoya that are out in my greenhouse so i did go ahead and grab those and bring them inside uh, just for a kind of a quick show off this is my hoya compacta um it's a pretty common uh, Hoya. It's one of those ones though that I feel like a lot of people have had some bad luck with at some point. Um, this one is the kind of like crinkly version of the Hoya Carnosa. So it is the Hoya Carnosa Compacta is its full name. And it's a really slow grower for a lot of people. Um, it tends to be, I don't wanna say picky, but like I've heard from a lot of people that it's fairly picky. Mine seems to be doing really well for me though, so fingers crossed it's because this one actually likes me. Um, I do kind of have dreams of having one of those like big long trailing compactas at some point, so that's the hope. Um, but I did stick this one outside. It just had like a little bit of like a weird dust on it that like wouldn't blow off and like wouldn't really spray off. It's like I didn't know if it was like a pest or what was going on. Um, I put it in the greenhouse with ladybugs and the other kind of pest, uh, predatory mites, insects that I've gotten. And it seems like it's doing really well out there actually. Um, it does have a ton of new growth actually. So like down here, this whole like end is new growth. I have new growth up here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, more new growth kind of on this side over here. So this whole plant um, is actually covered in new growth, which is kind of awesome. Um, maybe it likes the heat, I don't know. I am a Florida girl, but I really hate the heat myself. Go figure, some of my plants would enjoy it. Um, but I don't know if that's what triggered the growth, but I'm pretty happy with it. I think that I'm probably gonna leave it out there for a little while longer. I probably am gonna water it today though, because it does seem like it needs some water. Um, a lot of people tell you you should pinch Hoya, like to see if they'll do the taco thing, um, to see if they're thirsty. But I've also kind of heard the other way, which is, hey, if you can already do that, like you're already kind of past the point of thirsty. So I kind of try to meet it somewhere in the middle of, hey, the leaves feel like a little bit soft, but not like super like bendy. And I'll try to water at that point, especially if the soil is dry. Um, and that seems to be doing pretty well, though this one does get a little bit neglected just being outside. Uh, I don't water the plants in my greenhouse probably as often as I should and while they don't seem to be upset about it they probably would appreciate it so this is my Hoya Canosa Compacta and I think it is super cute um, it's just one of those kind of like staple Hoya and I'm hoping mine will continue to get bigger for me because it's like I said putting out a lot of new growth and I'm really excited to see it all right and the next plant uh, that i kind of keep out in my greenhouse that is also a hoya is this hoya black margin and this one is another one that like i said probably could use a little bit more water than it's getting um it does you know live out there with my uh, carnosa compacta so it probably doesn't get as much water as it would like uh, the leaves are like a little bit soft not every single one of them but enough to where i'm probably going to water this one today and I feel like actually having it out in the greenhouse has almost bleached the leaves a little bit. Um, as you can see, like the lower leaves, even though I have water spotting on them, are like a little bit darker. And then the top leaves are a little bit more like of that lime color. So I feel like maybe this one would appreciate a little bit less light, especially to keep those kind of black margins going. However, it is tendrilling for me, which is kind of cool. It's putting out a lot of new growth kind of all over the place, which is always a good sign. It's something that lets you know, like, hey, your plant's happy, it's growing. Um, but I just feel like I could probably do a little bit better for this plant. So I'm going to try to step up my game. Uh, actually, I'm thinking about moving this plant inside as well. Um, just to kind of, like I said, give it a little bit better environment, maybe where it'll be happier, not quite as dry and not quite as bright. But this is my Hoya Black Margin. I really do quite like the little black margin on the leaves, even though it was more prominent when I first received it. And I'm hopeful that by putting it back inside that maybe it will do a little bit better for me. So Hoya Black Margin, 
probably shouldn't be in the greenhouse. <laughs> okay, so now we're moving on to the shelf, uh, the Hoyas that I keep over there. And I do show some of them off fairly frequently, so I'm gonna kind of start with those since you've probably seen them recently. And I'm not gonna talk about them quite as much. Uh, but this is my Hoya fungi, and I really, really love this plant. I don't know exactly what about it it is, if it's just that, you know, I was afraid that I was going to lose it, and then, like, I grew it from, like, a single one-leaf cutting, like, whole thing, but I really think this plant is so cool. It has the prettiest leaves with, like, very minimal uh, little splash on there. And it's just really pretty. I love the veining on these leaves. Um, personally, like veining for me is like a huge thing. I think that veining, especially on Hoyas, makes them look, I, I don't know, I like almost dragony. Like they just give me like dragon vibes. I don't know why, but like those scaly kind of like lizard reptilian vibes. And I really enjoy it. Um, if you see the sawdust kind of stuff on the leaves that I'm brushing off, um, that is from the predatory mites that I used. It's one of like the mediums that they come in. Um, so ignore that. <laughs> but I really enjoy this one. I especially really love this leaf with like that one little bit of splash. I think that's so pretty. And it is putting out a little bit of a tendril for me. This one is growing kind of funny because it like grew up out of this one leaf and then grew up this way towards the back and is now growing pretty much straight up, which I think is kind of funny. Um, but it seems to be pretty happy. Uh, but the newest leaves that are coming in are kind of rubbery feeling, which is kind of like a eh feeling. Um, but I still think they're really cute, really pretty, especially, you know, with that color. I'm hoping that it will start sun stressing um, now that I'm going to have a little bit closer to the light or now that it's going to be growing a little bit closer to the light. I think that this one would be particularly pretty at sun stressed. And yeah, I just really like this little Hoya fungi eye. And like I said, it's one of the ones on my shelf and I wanted to share it with you guys. And <laughs> sorry, I keep on getting distracted by a corgi over here. He is so cute. Here goes. Yeah, he's so funny. So the next Hoya that I want to share with you guys is this one. This is my Hoya obavada Virgata Splash. Uh, quite a mouthful of a plant for sure. And a really steady grower. When I got it, it had just these bottom two leaves and like, I think it maybe have had a growth spike. Uh, I'm trying to remember, but it, you know, was going to start growing pretty soon. And it definitely did. It put out this whole vine here for me. And I wouldn't necessarily even call this a tendril. Like it's a really thick vine. Um, and this one, I would actually say is probably one of my easiest Hoya. Um, if you are just getting into Hoya, this was I think one of my first and I would definitely recommend it. It has like super thick leaves. The uh, vine is pretty thick. The root system is not like super, super like delicate looking or anything. It has like a little bit thicker roots. So it is a little bit of a hardier Hoya, I would say as compared to like some of the like really thin vining ones. Um, so it's definitely good to kind of get a feel for but I really love the variegation on these leaves. I think that it is so pretty. Um, when I was looking for Hoya obavada, I was just kind of looking for the splash version. Um, and I found this one or it kind of fell into my lap and I don't regret a thing. I think it is so pretty. And I've kept it in this little like Dixie cup since I've gotten it, but it is kind of getting to the point where it might need a repot sometime soon. Um, so I am kind of excited for that, especially because it's uh, kind of tipping over. It's at a uh, little bit of a delicate point, especially as it keeps growing up. I tried to kind of stabilize it with this and it's not, not working. It has to be leaned up against something or it will fall over. So I think it would probably appreciate being in a pot. That way it has a little bit of weight to kind of hold it down. Um, so I will probably try to do that sometime soon. But this is my Hoya Obavada Virgata Splash. And I think it is just the prettiest little Hoya. All right, so the next couple of Hoya both came from the same place as my Callistophylla. So they both also have that super uh, cocoa chip heavy kind of mix. And for my Macrophylla here, it hates that mix. Um, <laughs> I think it would probably like it more if it was getting like super frequent like drench waterings. Um, but this one actually had a bit of an accident. It was in a plastic pot 
and because of it this one had like a bunch more leaves um in recent memory unfortunately um it had probably like four leaves over here and two over here and actually it ended up falling off of my windowsill because it overbalanced and I didn't see it for a good probably at least a couple days probably a little bit longer um because it it had fallen off behind some stuff and I just didn't notice it was there. Um, this actually is again an east facing window and it dries out so fast with this mix that it ended up getting pretty over dry and it's just it was not good. Um, so I did actually repot it into this little terracotta pot. It's just a little bit of extra weight but I think it will be enough to kind of balance this plant out. I am hoping that it will put out another growth point because as you can see here like this growth point died off this growth point died off um and again totally my fault like i just didn't notice that it had fallen but it is really sad so i'm hopeful that with more water <laughs> and you know a pod that's not going to topple over that this one will do a little bit better for me so i wouldn't say this is necessary or necessarily a thirsty hoya but when it's in this mix it is very thirsty all the time. And I did actually add a little bit of soil around when I repotted it to try to help it out a little bit. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But this is my Hoya Macrophylla, um, actually Albo Marginata, so it does have that variegation on the edges. And yeah, she's in rough shape, but I'm hoping she'll do better soon. So the next Hoya that I have on my list here is my Hoya Polymura. And this plant is actually super, uh, kind of unique even as far as Hoyas go. Um, when I got it, it was just a little two leaf cutting and sorry, there was something on the end there that I was just kind of picking at. Um, but it was just a little two leaf cutting and the leaves on this one are super thin. Um, this is one I would definitely describe as a thirstier Hoya, even in, you know, Coco Coir mix, which again, not my favorite, <laughs> um, but it's really thirsty. I could probably water this every day and it would be totally fine with it. Um, I don't water it every day, so it's like a little bit mad at me. I think actually, I don't think that splash, like I want to say that's probably like some underwatering damage. I could be wrong. Um, and if it is splash, I'm not going to be upset at all. Trust me. Um, but like none of the original leaves kind of have any splashing. So I'm going to see if it continues to go that way. But this one I've definitely underwatered, um, at more than one point and yeah, it could probably use a new uh, potting medium that's not quite so prone to drying out. But in general, this Hoya is super pretty. I love the veining on this Hoya. Like you can see the front and but like I think it's more prominent even on the back. It almost has like fish tail, fish scale type veining. And if you guys watched my favorites, or not my favorites, my wishlist plant videos, which I will link here, um, I did actually mention that I wanted to get a Hoya Polynura Brogé at some point. But the Hoya Polynura Brogé is a super pretty, um, really high, like, splash version of the Hoya Polynura. So I kind of want to see just, like, what it was like before I bought, you know, a more expensive one. And like I said, definitely a thirstier plant. Um, so something that I probably should learn to kind of keep up with before I invest in a more expensive plant. Um, the leaves definitely are a little soft right now, could use some water. But in general, I really just think this is a really pretty plant. Um, I probably could take some more cuttings and actually make like a fuller plant out of this. I feel like this is one that would root pretty well. Um, just, you know, based on the stem, I see like a few little like aerial root nodes and because it does grow so fast, it would probably recover pretty quick. But right now it has like just on the very tip there, some new growth. Um, so I don't want to disturb that. So I might wait until that's out and ready before I start taking cuttings, um, and trying to propagate them. But I think this is one that would make like a super pretty basket. I don't know if this is one that will trail. Most Hoya, when you um, have the tendrils going down, they cut off that tendril and they stop growing to that tendril. So I'm not sure if this is one that would do the same. Um, it does seem to be growing upwards. It likes, <laughs> it likes kind of like that upward trends, but 
I don't know. I just, I, like I said, think it's really pretty. Really love the veining and just kind of like the fishtail kind of appearance of it. And I wouldn't necessarily say this is a beginner friendly Hoya just due to kind of like the water requirements and just kind of, I want to say how picky it is um, with the watering. But I think if you're careful, you could probably get away with it um, after kind of familiarizing yourself with the more hardy Hoyas. But again, super pretty. I really love this one. Okay, so I did go ahead and grab my next two. And this one is kind of still a mystery uh, ID or like a NOAA ID. It was sold to me as a Hoya Australis Lisa. And I purchased it because I had seen Hoya Australis Lisas that I think are super pretty. And I really, really liked them, um, especially like in a long trailing kind of basket. So I did want to pick one up. Um, when I bought it, it was in really bad condition. Um, unfortunately, it looked probably like it had flat mites. Um, and I ended up cutting it up into pieces, propping it, and like one of the props died off. It took months to root. And I mean, like it literally probably a month ago after having it for probably about six months, it finally had enough roots to pot up into this little pot. And it finally started growing as well, which was really nice um, because none of them had grown at all for ages. And it's still putting out, I wanna call it some weird growth. <laughs> um, and I think that's partially what's contributing to like the ID confusion. Um, I've had some people say that because the leaves are so pointy that they think that it's a Hoya Crimson Princess, which I mean, it definitely could be. I, I just don't know. Um, they're pretty similar looking plants for the most part, but my Hoya Australis, just normal Australis, the green version, does have like round leaves, but they are pretty pointy. So I don't know kind of where I stand on that one. Um, the new growth, like I said, I think it's just deformed due to luck and the fact that those, <laughs> those cuttings were not doing well and possibly even flat mites. Um, which I do kind of want to treat my entire Hoya collection for just as a precaution. So stick around, I'll probably do a video on that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really know if this is a Hoya Crimson Princess or an Australis Lisa. I would like to think that it's an Australis Lisa and that I wasn't sold the wrong plants. Um, but I may never know. I just, in the meantime, really like the plant. think that the variegation is quite pretty, especially with those like different colors of green and cream in there. Um, and as it grows out, I'm hopeful that maybe I'll kind of reach a more firm conclusion about what kind of way it is. But until then, super pretty plant. I really quite enjoy it. And yeah, just a cute little, little pot of Hoya No ID. <laughs> All right, so next is a plant that I really, really like. Um, not to say I don't really like all of my plants, I do. I mean, I am definitely that plant mom though that picks favorites. Um, I, there are some plants that I like a little bit more than my others, even though I love them all. And this is one of them. Uh, so this is a Hoya Chelsea. And I think this is a hybrid, if I remember right. Um, it has Hoya Carnosa in it, I think. I don't remember what the other cross was though. I will leave it on the screen if I can find it. Um, but this one didn't grow for me for ages. This is one of the first Hoya cuttings that I got and rooted. And even though rooted, it didn't grow, didn't grow, didn't put out any new growth until fairly recently. Um, and it's actually put out these three top leaves. Those are the new leaves and I am so, so excited to see them because uh, the older leaves, you know, they were really pretty. They kind of have like almost a heart shaped appearance with some of them. They're kind of crinkly. They're just really cool looking. I really like that dark kind of color, but the new leaves really kind of show off, I think the best qualities of this Hoya. So I am really excited to have it. It is in a really, really small pot because the root system was pretty small. Um, I'm hopeful that kind of as it grows and matures that I'll be able to upsize it a little bit more. I don't know that I want to take cuttings of it though for at least a little while. Right now it's pretty happy, but with how long it took to root the first time, I don't know if that's normal or if maybe my cutting just 
you know, been taken a little bit before I got it. It did come in the mail, so that's always a possibility. But I just think this one's super cute. Um, I don't know that it's really common. I haven't really seen a ton of them, but I really like it. And I think I have at least seen like one basket of it. So I would kind of like to see maybe if I could get this one trailing. Um, I know a lot of people kind of have a whole thing like either trailing or, you know, climbing Hoyas with trellises and all that. I just want them to be happy. So <laughs> whatever my plan is happiest doing, this one does seem to kind of like to grow up right, but I really love trailing baskets. I think they're really pretty. So we'll kind of see, it might be battle of the wills to see, you know, which one of us wins out. But my Hoya Chelsea is certainly really cute and I really like it. Okay, so it is a different day. Um, I did not end up finishing uh, being able to actually go through all of my Hoya the other day, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up now. I do just have a few left. They're mostly the small guys, but I'm really excited about some of them. So I do just wanna start with this one. This is my Hoya Matilde, and this one started from three separate cuttings. Um, this is one of the ones that people you know, talk about and they say, oh, it grows really, really fast. And I would definitely have to agree. Um, almost this entire thing is kind of new growth. Like most of the cuttings are about this long and they just took off. Um, as you can see here, there is a bunch of new vines and this vine, if you look from the back, even has a peduncle, which is super exciting. It's hiding under that leaf there. If it would focus, there we go. Um, but this is one of those ones, like I said, that grows really, really fast. And I'm really happy to have it, honestly. I've seen some really big, beautiful hanging baskets of Hoya Matilde. And I am hopeful that one day I will have a really big, long, uh, kind of trailing of plants. I'm not quite there yet, but I am actually really happy with how this one is growing for me. It has a bunch of like cute little round fuzzy leaves with a lot of splash. And if you're looking for one that will size up pretty quick, or I mean, I guess grow bigger pretty quick, not necessarily size up, the leaves do stay the same size, then Hoya Matilde is a really good option. And I really love this one. All right, next is my Hoya CV Iris Marie. And this one is, it is growing, um, it's just growing really, really slow. So definitely two like polar opposites here. Um, it did put out like this whole new vine uh, right here, if you can see at the top. Uh, probably several months ago now actually, and it hasn't actually grown anything off of that vine, but I can see like where the leaves are developing or are ready to develop. Um, not really sure kind of what's taking this one so long. It just seems like it's one of those ones that grows pretty slow. And I will say like these pots, the ones that are in these pots, I feel like they dry out super fast. Um, so part of it actually could be that maybe this one's just a particularly thirsty Hoya in a really dry pot. It's always possible. I do kind of underwater a lot of these plants. Um, or at least I like, try to water them once a week and it doesn't always necessarily happen, but some of them could probably be watered even more frequently. So this is definitely one of those ones. She does have really thin leaves um but it's just really pretty uh has a little bit of sun stressing a little bit of veining i've never really seen a mature version of this plant so i'm not sure exactly what she is gonna look like i kind of was hoping to just find out for myself and you know so far her leaves do look really nice i just haven't gotten any new ones so I'm gonna try to make it a priority probably to water this one a little bit more frequently uh, just to see maybe if I can spark some new growth. Cause I think this new growth here was actually put out when she was in stratum to root. So when I put her into soil, I think she just stopped growing, um, which is entirely possible. Usually, you know, transplanting between substrates or, you know, putting a plant in a new pot, things like that all can stop their growth um, for a time period. So. That might be what happened, but I definitely do want to try watering her a little bit more often to see maybe if I can get some more new leaves because these leaves are really cute. All right, and next up is I feel like one that a lot of people are going to be familiar with. This is a Hoya Shepardii. 
Um, one of the more common Hoya, probably I would say, that people, you know, are able to get. And mine is doing pretty well. I did put out a tendril and I think you guys probably got to see me trellis it. Um, and when I trellised it, I did leave it pointing up, but maybe not dramatically enough because it did cut off the growth at the tip and is now growing it from this side of the tendril over here, which is fine. I'm not upset by that. You know, it's kind of a you live and you learn type situation, lesson learned for me uh, to definitely make sure to be, you know, as careful as possible when wrapping vines and tendrils to make sure that I'm not going to cause them to cut off the growth. But these Hoya have really long string bean type leaves, which I think is actually really cool. Um, when they are like in a long trailing plant, they can look really striking and really cool, um, which I do really appreciate. And even though this one is obviously still pretty small, only has actually a few leaves on it, even though it does have this whole tendril, I still think it is a really cool looking plant, just kind of unique. It's not like a lot of leaves that you really see out there. So I really would like this one to grow a little bit more. But again, I think this pot might be drying it out too fast. This is a particularly thin uh, terracotta pot. I got these from the dollar store. So there's always the chance that maybe that's kind of part of it. So I, again, I'm gonna try to make a resolution to water this one more often and see maybe if that does uh, improve the growth for me a little bit because I am really interested in seeing this Hoya get some really, you know, bushier leaves on it or like bushier growth on it. Uh, the leaves themselves are like really thick, which is just kind of interesting. Like they're slightly curved, but if you have them flat, they're just like, they're really thick, especially in the middle. And I just think it's really unique. I really quite like it. And actually the next toy that I have here is the variegated version. So I just kind of want to give you a peek of the two of them right next to each other. This one obviously is the green, and then this one is the variegated version. There we go, that's the Hoya Wyattei. And the Hoya Wyattei uh, has the, I believe, inner variegation. Yeah, there's another name for it, I think it's like Kyattei? Ki I don't know. They all end in EI and I kind of get lost, but this one is a particularly slow grower from what I've noticed and from what I've heard. It is not one that's going to grow fast for you. So if you are growing from a cutting like I am, I probably am not going to have a full plant for a very long time, um, which I am okay with right now. Obviously, you know, it's small enough to fit on my Hoya shelf, which is fine by me. And the variegation is getting a little bit of sun stressing. So it does have that pretty pink in there, which I do really enjoy. So I do like having it where it is. I do think it's happy where it is. Um, obviously, again, this one might need a little bit more water. This is actually a concrete pot. So probably about the same level of dehydration. For anyone who doesn't know, terracotta pots, concrete pots, uh, those kind of pots are always going to dry out a little bit faster than, say, a plastic pot because they are porous. They do absorb moisture. Um, so this one in particular, I do find sometimes when I go to water it is a little bit hydrophobic um, just because all the moisture has been pulled from the soil. So this is also on my list of water more frequently, especially being a smaller plant, you know, they are going to dry out pretty quick. There's less soil to hold that moisture. So I think just overall a theme is going to be, hey, I should really water this Hoya more, but I really do enjoy this one. I like the sun dressing that you can see on the leaves and I like the pink vine and I just like the variegation. I think it's really pretty uh, to have that inner variegation on like those green bean leaves. I think it's really unique and I really enjoy it. All right, and next up is my Hoya Bretonnier. This one I really, really like. It's definitely one of my favorites. Um, I will say though, I think this is the thirstiest Hoya in my collection. Um, the leaves aren't particularly thin or anything like that. They are actually super like fuzzy and almost feel kind of like cardboard, but like fuzzy cardboard. I don't really know how to describe them. I really, really enjoy them though. Um, and this actually does have some new growth. 
but the issue with the Bretonnier is, like I said, it's definitely one of my thirstier Hoya, and because it does get so thirsty, this is actually one of the plants that will cut off new growth when it gets thirsty. So I have had a few new growth points die off really, really quick on this plant, simply because I didn't water it fast enough. And actually just before I started filming today, I lost a leaf and I don't know where it went, um, but they kind of get like pinky and orange and they just don't look healthy and then they fall off. So that's my bad, definitely one that I need to be more mindful of. And when I am mindful, she's doing great. She actually has three brand new growth points along this vine, um, which I am very excited about. Like I said, I really think this one is really cool. I haven't really seen her around a whole lot. Um, but I, you know, really think that if you have the right conditions for it, if you are able to water it often enough, this is just a really cool one. Um, there's not a lot of Hoya out there that have that kind of like fuzzy, felty leaf like this does, but those fuzzy leaves do make it one of the more unique Hoyas in my collection. And I really enjoy it. So this is my Hoya Bertonier. And again, I definitely need to water her more. That way she stops dropping her leaves for me, but she's really cute. And I really would like her to get really big one day. I don't know you know, what her growth habit's going to be, if she will be one that will be okay trailing. I kind of am getting a feeling she's going to be a trellis one, but we'll have to see. All right, and next up is my Hoya Serpents. Uh, this one is a pretty tiny cutting. Um, it did come to me as a really, really small two-leaf cutting, and if you don't know, Hoya Serpents is a super small uh, little plant, or like small leafed little plant. Um, so it is one that's going to probably take a while to grow. Um, I think Wild Fern here on YouTube does have like a really big, long, bushy one. And I would like to have one of those one day. And I don't know that this cutting is going to get me there because it is so small. And I am one of those people, I hate cutting my plants unless there's a good reason. Especially when they're this small. Like I don't think cutting it into like little nodes and then rooting those individual nodes is going to be necessarily like what I want to do. So I might just get like a bigger serpents and maybe add it in there. But these leaves are really, really cool. They are kind of rough feeling, um, kind of like a cat tongue, actually. That's kind of what they remind me of. And they do have kind of a unique shape. They are pretty round, but they are kind of shaped like a snake head. Uh, that's my understanding of where that name came from as well, the Hoya Serpents. But this is a really cute one. Um, actually, it is one of the parents of the Matilde. The Matilde is a cross between a Serpens and... Oh, there's another plant in there and I can't remember what it is, but it is a cross. Um, but the Serpens is obviously just a little bit of a smaller plant or a little bit of a smaller leafed plant. I think the, you know, Matilde just kind of sized it up a little bit. But I really do enjoy this one, um, and for right now, it is in stratum to root in this tiny little shot glass, so, you know, pretty small. Um, but it's a good size for it for now, and honestly, I'm probably going to leave it in here for a while, at least until I see some significant rooting, um, because it is such a small little cutting. I think this is a good size vessel for it, and it's hard to see kind of the roots reaching the edges, though there are a few. I just don't think my camera would be able to pick them up, but definitely a cute little Hoya. Um, I'm definitely interested in getting a larger one, but I do love this one. And I think it's really just a very cool little plant to have in my collection. All right, next up, and this one is also one of my more unique Hoyas, I would definitely say. This is my Hoya Rattusa. Um, the Hoya Rattusa, I think out of all the Hoya, probably most closely resembles like a Hoya linearis. Um, it just has like that really unique leaves that are really long. They don't even really look like leaves, but they are. Um, and the Hoya retusa, let me see, or if I can show you guys up close here, has just those really long, like almost needly shaped leaves. And it does have this tendril where all of these like little leaves have come out of with these little growth points. Um, definitely just a really cool little plant. I did get, 
I honestly don't know how many notes it was because the growth pattern is so unusual, but I would say at least like a two node cutting. Um, and it did actually take a while to put out new growth. So it's not like a super fast grower by any means, but also wouldn't say it's particularly slow um, because it has put out this tendril and you know a bunch of new leaves pretty quickly. I think it just took a while to get established. Um, this one isn't particularly thirsty though again it is in a plastic pot which is going to impact that slightly this one honestly is just pretty easy i have popped it underneath you know the grow light with some of my other hoya and i water it when i water the others and it is pretty easy going it's pretty happy um for such a unique plant like i i'm really happy it's easy going because i would really hate to lose this one it's so cool and so different um, and I am actually really excited because I have another growth point coming in over here. So at some point I am going to have maybe another tendril and I will actually have the start of a hanging basket of this Hoya. And, you know, with this growth pattern, I think that's going to be just the coolest thing. So this is my Hoya Retusa. And again, I am so excited to have this one. If you have the opportunity to pick this one up, I would recommend it. It's been so easy going and it's just a really cool and unique addition. All right, so next on my list is actually probably one of the more common Hoyas um, that people are gonna hear about. And it's not to say it's not a cool Hoya. I think it's talked about because it is kind of a cool Hoya. This is my Hoya Sunrise. And the Hoya Sunrise is known in a lot of like the Hoya circles and, and the plant community because it has such cool sun stressing. The sun stressing does really emphasize the veining and the texture on these leaves and it just gets like this really dark purpley maroon and it's so pretty. Um, only the two bottom leaves really have that sun stressing right now so I don't know how well you're going to be able to see them but this leaf over here on the right that's the one that has the sun stressing. And then I have just plain green. And then these are the newer leaves. This plant is a little bit thirsty, so it is kind of losing a little bit of the rigidity, but there is actually a little bit of sun stressing on the newest leaves. So I am really excited about that. It's harder to sun stress Hoya under um, like 10 watt grow lights. Like I have these Hoya under because it's not gonna have the same strength um, so they're not going to develop the same color that they might underneath a stronger grow light or underneath full sun. So I think they are finally getting close enough to where they can sun stress pretty well. And this one is a really great example of that because obviously it's going to get that darker purpley maroon color. And I just think it's really unique. It's really cool um, to see a Hoya take that sun stressing so readily. Um, whereas a lot of my other Hoya is just they keep their green leaves and they're really pretty and I really love them. But I think it's really just very unusual to see a plant go from like full green to full dark purpley red um, so easily. So this one is really cool and I definitely understand the hype. I really like this little Hoya Sunrise. Again, it was a two leaf cutting um, and it grew pretty quick for me. I would say it's been a pretty standard grower, pretty, you know, Easy going, run of the mill, not super hard. I really like this one. And if you are looking for a Hoya to sun stress and get some really pretty color on it for you, definitely the Hoya Sunrise, I would say is a good option. So this is my Hoya Sunrise. And again, just a super cute little Hoya. All right. And this is actually the last Hoya, uh, I think for this video. I might've missed one or two. I tried not to, even though I had like two separate days going on. Um, but this is the last one that I think that I have that I haven't shown yet, and that is the Hoya CV Nuna. So this one I know almost nothing about. Um, it's not one that is pretty common that I've seen a whole lot of, um, but I did get it as like a little like single leaf, single node type cutting, and it has actually put out one new leaf for me, and I'll show you guys real quick. So the smaller leaf that looks a little bit oddly shaped there in the back, that is actually the newer leaf. And then the other one is the one that it came with. Again, it is in these pots, uh, like the terracotta ones. So I think it's probably a little bit of a thirst problem. Um, if I keep up on the watering, I think I might be able to get some like actual new growth out of this so I can kind of get a better idea of what it's gonna look like. 
um, but it is another one that has a little bit of fuzz to the leaves which is really cool um, I am kind of a sucker for really cool Ooh. I am kind of a sucker for like really cool leaves or textured leaves or beautifully colored leaves um, leaves are a huge motivation for you know my plant purchases if it's a really cool leaf I'm gonna be probably more interested in it and this one definitely has kind of like that cool texture even though the leaves don't look super um, interesting as far as I can tell so far they're just you know fairly standard green um, but I think this one does have some potential to be a really cool looking Hoya if I could just get it to grow. So that is kind of the chance you take with Hoya cuttings is that they might take forever to grow. They are not like the fastest growing species by any means. Um, it's really exciting when they do put out new growth though I will say. But this one in particular has been pretty slow. I was so excited to see like that growth point on there and it's still there. I mean, it hasn't fallen off or anything like the Bertonier does. So I'm really interested to see what this one will turn into and I will definitely keep you guys updated. But again, this is my little Hoya CD Nuna. All right guys, and that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed getting to see all of my Hoya and getting to kind of hear me give you the rundown on how they behave, how I take care of them, um, that kind of information. I know that Hoya can be a pretty variable species. There are some that are super easy and there are some that are considered to be more difficult. And I don't think any of mine have been particularly difficult yet. So I wouldn't say that any of them are not suited for a beginner, even though some of them might take a little bit of time to kind of figure out the watering for or to kind of get some growth on. But I really love my Hoya and they have encouraged me definitely to kind of delve deeper into the Hoya world. So if you guys have any recommendations for some Hoya that you think I would be interested in, please leave them down below. Um, I am always looking for plans to add to my wish list. And if you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. It helps out my channel a lot. And there is a subscribe button um, down there. If you hit that, you will see me around more often. I would love to see you guys around as well. But I think that's it for today. So thanks so much. Bye.